Welcome back to the Young Church. Do you know what DA-14 is? It's an asteroid weighing 130,000 metric tons, and it's headed in our direction. Watch out, Dune says. ABC News has more. It's the size of Texas. My God. It's not quite Armageddon, but it is massive, frightening, and getting closer by the hour. It's named DA-14, and it weighs 130,000 metric tons, more than a cruise ship. If that doesn't impress you, it's half the size of a football field, and it's whizzing through space eight times faster than a bullet fired from a gun. This animation made by scientists tracking DA-14 shows it will come within 17,000 miles of the Earth tomorrow, an astronomically close shade worthy of Star Wars. So which organization discovered this asteroid and how scary it is? Well, it's the organization of this guy. Oh yeah, we're rocking it old school like that. Hey, Bill Nye's in the studio. How you doing? There's, there's no place a man would rather be. <laughs> than Rebel Headquarters. You got that right, my friend. Bill's, of course, also the CEO of the Planetary Society. So, uh, Bill, uh, are we all going to die? No, not, 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 I mean, yes, uh, as far as anybody knows, everybody's going to die. <laughs> See, it's I almost stumped you on that one. It's troubling, but that seems to be the case. Um, with that said, an asteroid like this could kill a lot of people. This one's uh, 45 meters. Mm. What did you say, 130 uh, tons? 130,000 metric tons, 1, yeah. 1,000 tons. Oh, my heaven. Zzz, no pun intended. So, this one is one of many, many, many. Uh, about 100,000 objects like this. So we've discovered or we have tracked about 1% of them. So there's 99% more out there. Oh, now, have you ever heard comforting. of the Tunguska event? I was going to ask you about that. 1908, Siberia. Tell me more about it because I think a lot of people don't know about day. it. So this rock comes into the Earth's atmosphere, <laughs> blows down trees, 2,000 uh, 2, square kilometers, bang, blows them all down like that in a, in a flash. And so, uh, have you ever heard this expression, don't jump off the Golden Gate Bridge? Yeah. When you hit the water, it'll kill you. It'll be just like concrete. Mm -hmm. Well, when you're an asteroid going 25,000 kilometers a second, 15 kilome uh, 25,000 kilometers an hour, 15 kilometers a second, something like that, you hit the Earth's atmosphere, it stops you dead. Uh -huh. And you explode, if you're an asteroid. You explode and blow down everything with this shock wave. So this thing was about 20 uh, Hiroshima's. Wow, yeah, 20 uh, Hiroshima. And that was in 1908, one that's documented, very well known. But uh, So we got really lucky there that it was not a populated area. Oh yeah, well it would be, people would look at asteroids quite differently if it had hit a populated area. Like if instead of Siberia it had hit, hit Paris. Paris, Tokyo. Oh. Yeah, it Sydney. would have been one of the greatest events in human it history. Would have been, it would have been like uh, Pompeii, if you've ever been in there where the, the whole town was buried by a volcano. Yeah, it would be this enormous, uh, it would be a catastrophe. And so we are the first generation of humans that could do something about it. So, if I may, how cool is that? No, no, but that is seriously cool, and you totally may. Uh, so how would we do something about it? Choo -choo lasers? What are we uh, talking lasers. about? Lasers, yes. Okay. So we at the Planetary Society, we fund these kooky little projects. Mm -hmm. We have 30,000 people around the world just think it's cool. Please join us, planetary.org. Little, little shameless plug. God bless. Uh, so these guys in La Sagra, Spain, Jaime Noman and his colleagues, found this thing. What we would do, one of our other projects at the planetary side, what we would do is maybe send out a flotilla of spacecraft, a network of little no. spacecraft with solar panels, Soak up the sunlight, make laser, uh, make laser beams, bzzz, and cause the surface of an asteroid to volatize, to evaporate just a little. That's kind of a cool thing we're messing with. Another okay. way to just here's my it. sophisticated question to that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Because like, I mean, we don't have that capability now, do we? Well, in a sense, we do. If, in other words, we people went to the moon in ten years, we could certainly do this kind of thing in ten years. But the uh, the, the trick, the, the big idea to get when you go to deflect an asteroid, if you ever decide to go in this business. Yeah, of course. All you want to do is change its speed.
speed ever so slightly. This asteroid, uh, 2012 DA14, is missing us by about 15 minutes. 15 minutes and Paris, Tokyo, New York, Los Angeles would be Oklahoma let, City. Let, 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 me, let me stop you there because I, I want to know what you mean by 15 minutes. If it was, what, 15 minutes quicker, slower, if I don't it, know what that means. If it had been, the way I'm going to say this, if it had gotten here 15 minutes earlier, mm -hmm. it would have hit us. But instead, oh, it's because miss. We, because everybody's everything's it's moving, moving in space. It's a four because problem. everybody thinks of like the Earth is like, what do you mean? We're right here. Yeah, what do you yeah, mean? Yeah. Right. So the Earth is orbiting the Sun. This thing is orbiting the Sun out of the plane of the Earth's orbit uh -huh. by a little bit. So uh, tomorrow, Friday, Happy Valentine's Day, by the way. Uh, uh, tomorrow, YouTube, uh, Friday, <laughs> the as this asteroid uh, 2012 DA14 will come up from the south, pass over Indonesia, a closest approach over Indonesia. The Earth will turn, and then the Goldstone Observatory will point its radar at it from California as it goes up past the Earth. But 15 minutes earlier, and it would hit us. Oh, that's so amazing. So this is only 1% of these objects that we know about. And these are city killers. There are other bigger objects that are, how to say, civilization killers. So it's in a sense they're almost like loose nukes because you said the one that hit Siberia was about twenty size yeah. uh, of Hiroshima and here in the you know of course back on planet Earth we're scared to death of loose nukes but these are loose nukes times twenty we at are least in a up in the sky. shooting gallery right and so how do we find out about the other ninety nine percent is it is it funding what do we need to do well funding of course would be great and mm -hmm. the planetary society has gotten people who are in a niche that is to say they've gotten really good at looking for these so-called fast-moving objects. You know, the trouble with these things is they're not very big and they're dark as charcoal and they're zipping. I mean, they're going really fast, so to just find them is quite difficult. Now, we are working with the B612 Foundation. We hope someday to partner with them and uh, they're building, a, they're trying to build a spacecraft that would look out from about the orbit of Venus 70% of the distance from here, uh, from the sun to here. And then, then this thing would be tuned to look for the infrared. Uh, in the infrared, these things are somewhat reflective. But that's, that's sort of medium term thinking. We so, gotta keep an eye out now. Give me a number. How much money do you need to be able to track all the asteroids so we make sure that we don't all die one day? I mean, because you're talking about a civilization ending. If it's large enough, could it not just destroy the entire planet? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, welcome to my world. And these things hit every, uh, uh, the one goes by about every 40 years, estimated, mm -hmm. but one hits every three times that, 120, 1200, mm -hmm. so. And we had a huge one hit in 1908, you and know what, one, at 120 years. Well, there was one over uh, the Amazon in 1936, and there's nobody around, so the documentation is very good. Furthermore, you look at it from space, you can hardly see the jungle grows back so fast. These things, this, in this instance, these things disintegrate in midair. Uh, but that's only when they're this, if I can use the term, small. Right. As big as this building. And so the last two times we got lucky because it's in yeah. the middle of Siberia and the jungle and Amazon. The third time, we're really going to get lucky again? Uh, I, it well, doesn't I'm sound like my it. World. And so furthermore, the ancient dinosaurs as far as anybody knows, did nothing about this problem. <laughs> you know, I, I've always had a beef with the dinosaurs, yeah, well, and, I, and that's it. I've never had dinosaurs. It tastes like chicken. But <laughs> the, uh, the thing of it is, that rock, understand the dinosaur or the cluster of rocks or the cometary, the comet-like material, whatever it was, hit the Earth, shot stuff a halfway to the moon, the, the ejecta, the stuff tossed at, ejected, mm -hmm. that the diameter of that ejecta was bigger than the diameter of the Earth. So the stuff by gravity got pulled around the Earth and set the whole place on fire. So this is a, this is a serious thing, right? Yeah, so it sounds a little serious. People say, why doesn't NASA do something about it? Yeah. And there are cool old political reasons for this. First of all, until very recently, it wasn't part of NASA's charter. It wasn't mm -hmm. human spaceflight, and it wasn't Science. It's just uh, cataloging objects that are scientifically understood, blah, 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 blah. But we at the planetary side work hard to raise awareness of this. And so, uh, we, so me, we're maybe getting there. Let me go back to that question. How much money do you think is needed to catalog? This is a great question. So there's two things we do wrong 
as the CEO of, the, of a nonprofit. We don't ask for money, and then we don't ask for enough. Okay, so... So fix it right now. Uh, don't so, be the, like the dinosaurs, okay, Bill. Fix so, it. Well, let's t approach the problem in two ways. First, to get the Sentinel spacecraft flying, that's about 450 million. All right, yeah. Then between now and when that could possibly happen, it's about that much money. Mm -hmm. And then after that, to go deflect one, it's about that much money. So what, what are we into? We're, we're talking about a billion. One and a half billion. Oh, one and a half billion. That's not which bad. Which is we can what do the that. Curiosity rover costs. Oh, really? Right? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Uh -huh. So the Curiosity rover is just starting, man. We're, we may find something on the planet Mars that will, dare I say it, change the world. Right. You know what you need? You need Halliburton on your side. Because at one point, Bush said, it, we, let's go drill on Mars. It's because Halliburton was making the, well, the drilling know, equipment. There are guys so think about in, the planetar in the uh, planetary resources business, that's this company, they want to go out and mine an asteroid. You know, mm. these things are sort of solid stainless steel, some mm -hmm. of them. Right. And so it would be quite reasonable. They're full of platinum. They're full of... Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, platinum. Yeah, let's fabulous. get the Koch brothers involved. They want platinum. Well, yeah, so okay. that, I'm not kidding. It could be another convergence of commercial interest and exploration and uh, uh, citizenry worldwide working together to save the world. All right, sounds great. Bill Nye, the science guy. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for joining us.